Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are going to take a look at the previews for next weekend and some fancy new combat patrols. So what do we have lying in wait today? This is going to be a relatively quick one because there will be another video later covering New Model Monday and also I'm suffering massive technical issues again. All of my hard drives are failing at the same time, which is worrying because that surely speaks to a deeper, more serious issue, but I don't know what it is. I'm just in a world of hate and collapse. Let's blast through the preview and take a look at those battle boxes before we immediately become out of date by the reveal of some new models. Let's get into it. So first up, we've got a new battle box on the way, which is the uh, the one that we talked about the other day. So Fury of the Deep, which is an order versus order box. And it's really cool. I like the fact that it's order versus order. I don't know, Deepkin versus Fire Slayers. And actually, there's quite a lot of stuff in this box. It's quite sizable in terms of the number of models you get. Of course, that's helped by the fact that they are all infantry. I, well, I say, the, what do you even count the giant shark as? What do you even count, I suppose it's not even a giant shark, what do you count the shark as? Like, is that infantry? I mean, technically, it's it's not like on foot, is it? It's a swim infantry? Oh, my God. Oh, well, absolutely. That joke of the week, that. There's never going to be anything better than that. Also, just a terrible pun. But yeah, I quite like the look of this box, to be honest, because it is order versus order. It's something a little bit different. Kind of highlights the fact that a lot of those factions are, whilst working together, also a bit aloof and alienated and have some deep grudges that go back a long way. It's cool. More of this would be fun. Now, within this box, we have got two new models. We've got uh, the Auric Flamekeeper. I nearly got that right from when I read it the other day. But then I, I doubted myself, and I didn't want to say it without reading it aloud in case I got it wrong. And the Achelian Thrallmaster, who corrals his soulless Namati troops and spurs them onwards to greater heights of violence. Sounds like uh, sounds like just what you need. Also, loving his eel friend. I was going to say his is like his little eel friend. Quite a big eel. Also quite scary. Weird teeth. I suppose that's... <laughs> mind you... I think that's just because there's a lot to try and pack into such a small mouth, detail-wise, there. I do like the paint job on it, though. I like that symbol. That was really cool. So, yeah, we've got uh, more infantry for the Fire Slayers. I mean, I'm not a Fire Slayers expert, but I feel like they've got plenty of stuff on foot. But then again, maybe this is just a guy that they need. His axe is pretty cool. I will give you that. I like the, uh, the gut plate that is also a face. That's a nice touch. Yeah, overall, I quite like these two. I mean, the eel's always going to get bonus points, and the barnacle rock, I mean, yes, he does have his foot on a rock. He is standing on a rock, but it's a rock with barnacles on it. And you know what? I'll take that. It's something a little bit different. I will absolutely take that. That looks kind of good. Alongside that, we've got another nautical themed um, <laughs> release. I say nautical themed, I suppose only half of the previous one is nautical themed. So this is, uh, this is Gorlock Black Powder and his motley crew. We've covered these guys before. They were shown off a while ago. He's got a massive gun, like a big, like, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a Caradron Overlord's gun. I forget what the actual gun is, but it looks like a double barrel blunderbuss, which is quality. The monkey with the knife in his tail, I think that might overtake the crab in terms of popularity. I don't know though. I don't know. I feel like when it comes to, uh, when it comes to the model of the year at the end of this year, which is a long way away, um, I reckon. I reckon probably the, the monkey with the knife in the tail might be a bit of a fan favourite. I mean, it's a monkey with a knife in his tail. I, it, it, look at him. He's going to be an absolute crowd pleaser. You know it, I know it. The massive, brutal cutlass is always a treat. I do like that a lot. And I also like the fact that he's got the little braids and bows and beads in his, in his, in his beard. Yeah, solid. Quality. Quality little gang, that. They do look good. So alongside that, we've got uh, Haradeep Rivals deck. There's a new Blood Bowl, uh, Blood Bowl pitch. The dubious bettings of Grandfather Nurgle. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I really need to just get a Blood Bowl a blood bowl team. I really do, don't I? I should just bite the bullet and get it. But I wanted to do... Um, I wanted to do dwarves. I need said orcs. I wanted to do dwarves. And then when I said I wanted to do dwarves, all the comments were like, no, don't do dwarves. Everyone hates dwarves. You will be hated for playing dwarves. And now I don't know what to think, because I really like the look of dwarves, and I like the big death roller thing. But I don't want to rock up to a game of Blood Bowl, pull out dwarves, and people go, what a try-hard piece of shit. I don't want that, but I feel like that might be the result of doing that. I don't know. I don't know what to do now. I had my heart set, but I don't know. I, I, I'm always one to be contrary, so if something's good, I don't necessarily want to play it, which is probably why I lose games all the time. Now, we've got the usual dice as well to go along with that, but more importantly, 
we've got croissants. We've got flying croissants. The croissants of doom are on the way. They are finally being revealed. I mean, not revealed, released. But they showed us these a while ago. I forget when it was that they showed these off, but they are on their way. <laughs> I love them. I genuinely love them. I, I kind of, ah, yeah. I, the Doom site I really like a lot more. I like it a lot more than the Night Shroud. I, I just think they look cooler. But they're a, they're a Forge World thing, which makes them massively expensive. Because I have thought about doing some sort of Necron thing since uh, since Indomitus dropped and we got all the all the fancy Necron stuff. I still have a load to build. But I got part way through and I was like, I want to do more vehicles and stuff, but I don't know what I want to do with them. And specifically, I like the Forge World things, but they're massively pricey. And uh, yeah, I'd, would I get the use out of it? I don't know. But little tiny versions... Little tiny versions, a lot more of a uh, an acceptable an acceptable outlay if you just fancy painting some little death croissants. Now, of course, there'll be the usual array of like watching White Dwarf and all of that stuff, like Black Library releases, Warhammer TV, so on and so forth. But but this is more important. This is far more important because we've got new combat patrols on the way, which means I think the range is actually getting pretty close to being rounded out at this stage. We're getting there anyway. Five of them at once is a big a big jump. So, first up, we've got the Tau Combat Patrol, which looks like a squad of fire warriors. You've got a ghost keel, you've got some, what, uh, stealth, what, what are the stealth suits called? The XV something or others? The, uh, just stealth battle suits. They've got a technical name, right? I'm not, I'm not misremembering. And ethereal as well. But yeah, I, 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 it's fine. There's not as many battle suits in there as I would have liked. I guess it's because I just, well, there's, there's technically, Technically, there are suits in there. You got the ghost keel and you got the stealth suits, but I'm talking the classic battle suits. I'm not going to complain about the ghost keel being in there because I actually think that's one of the best looking units the tower have got. The ghost keel looks absolutely solid, but I, for some reason, I always feel like when it comes to the at least a starter box for Tau, you need to have a couple of battle suits in there that are like the the classic ones. I don't know why though. Maybe that's just because that's how it's been for ages. Like the start collecting had battle suits in. So maybe it's just that I'm so used to seeing that that seeing this, I was like, it feels like it's missing something. But that's just like bias from the previous incarnation of this thing. That's probably all it is, but God, the the ghost keel looks so good. It looks so good. It's such a good looking unit. Now alongside uh, alongside this, there's also one for Grey Knights and Thousand Sons. The Grey Knights one, there's a nice array of units in there, to be fair. And the thing is, the Terminators can be built as Paladins as well, if I remember correctly. I think that's a dual kit. So the quickest of checks says that, yes, you can use uh, you can use this box to make either the Terminator Squad or the Paladin Squad, and the Strike Squad can be made into either the Strike Squad or Interceptor Squad, Purifier Squad or Purgation Squad. So basically, with this box, you're going to have a bunch of options because they're just going to be the normal sprues, I guess. Although, will they will they filter some sprues out in order to get them into the box? Maybe they will. Ooh, maybe that's a possibility. Maybe it won't be like the full. But then would they really do not the full kit because they share some components? That's actually tricky. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not actually sure how that's going to work. I don't see why they would take stuff out of this one when they don't have other other combat patrols, but maybe something to just keep a little eye on. Either way, though, either way, nice spread. There's not a huge amount in the Grey Knights range, and this has got pretty much all the unique stuff they have. So, also, it's got a Nemesis Dread Knight in there, so you're onto a winner. And a Librarian as well, so that's cool. For the Thousand Suns, we've got five Terminators, the Scarab Occult Terminators to be precise. We've got a Sorcerer, and we've got a bunch of Zangors by the look of things. Yeah, we have. Okay, are they the ones with the... Yeah, they've got the uh, the chainsawed arms, haven't they? Although I think, do those come in the box normally? I always forget, because the box that has the chainsaws in, I feel like that's been taken off the storefront. I haven't seen that around for a little bit, so... That's maybe not as... In a weird way, not as interesting to me as the Grey Knight one. I, I feel like because there's no Rubik Marines in there. I feel like, I feel like you've got to have... I think you've got to have Rubik Marines for a combat patrol of a thousand suns, right? They're like iconic. They're the thing that you think of. They are the thing that you think of when you think thousand suns. You think they're they're Rubik Marines, but there aren't any. That's a weird choice. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. I mean, we know that the points value for these is all going to be combat patrol size. So all five hundred points. So like, they're all going to be the same strength. But yeah, I don't know. That's just a weird choice to me. Okay, we've also got... Oh, wow, an Adeptus Custodius one. <laughs> All right, they probably showed this off before and I totally forgot. But 
I for ages I wondered how they were going to do this. To be totally honest with you, because like Adeptus Custodes, their stuff costs so much point wise that how they pulled off a combat patrol was was like <laughs> always a question of how they get it below the points limit. But actually, yeah, they've included what is it, so two boxes of the Sister Silence. We've got an Adeptus Custodes infantry squad, which can be made into the two different types, and then we've got three bikes as well. So. Yeah, okay, I can see it. I can see it. Again, a decent spread of units, and we know that the Sister Silence are getting some love, and they're getting some attention back again, actually being fully integrated into the Custodes, which is good, because they've just been a weird half assed like, what even is this group thing for a while now? So yeah, actually, I quite like that. I've no idea how good they are tabletop-wise, but, I mean, maybe they'll be way better now that things are all different in the new Codex. We'll find out. I would be surprised, but you know, we, we can live in hope. And then we've got the uh, the Gene Stealer Cults as well, which funnily enough has got quite a lot of models in it. <laughs> that's gonna be, I mean, that's gonna be pretty good, pretty good value for money. Most of the combat patrols are, to be fair. But uh, yeah, so what have we got? We've got some near fights, we've got some aberrants, aberrants, aberrants. I always get that wrong every time. We've got the Magus in the front there, we've got the Goliath, is it the Goliath or the Rock Grinder? Either way. Either way, that's that's not a bad box. That's a good number of models in there. That's a good number of models. Yeah, it looks good. So all five of these boxes will help you get a playable force on the tabletop. Well, yeah. Yeah, they, they should. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. Oh, they do say for the uh for the for the towel box that they can also be built as a breacher team. It's weird to me that they would specify mind you, I guess they're doing they're focusing for some reason they're focusing on it just being the towel thing, presumably because the codex is on the way. They're like, okay, look, here's the combat patrol for the Tau. The Codex is coming. Get them both at the same time when they both come out. But could also do with like a bit more in detail about the others. I mean, I'm assuming, for instance, that that Grey Knight box should be able to build all the varieties of stuff that come out of it, given that the entire range, basically, is represented in one box because those two kits should be able to build pretty much anything you want. So it would be... It would be good to kind of have that clarified. We will see soon enough whether they actually do or not, I guess. <laughs> anyway, did any of these tickle your fancy? Anything in there that you're quite looking forward to? Any combat patrol that's sticking out as being particularly good? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. In the meantime, feel free to click all the things. Patreon video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like. Don't click if you don't want to. And as always, there's an affiliate link in the description of the video, which you can use to support the channel if you would like. I leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.